Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and we are back at CES. This is the 2024 edition and like last year and the year before that and the many years before that, we are doing a series of dispatch videos where we run around with my backpack here and try to find as much new and interesting stuff as we can here at the show with a focus on some of the obscure stuff but some things that you might have heard about as well. I was really surprised to learn that this is the 100th year for the Consumer Technology Association and it shows you how old I'm getting because I always thought of 100 years ago as being in the 1800s, but in fact, when you think about it, 1924, it doesn't seem like it was all that long ago, but it was a century ago. So we're going to head into our first event called CES Unveiled. And inside that room over there, there are probably close to 100, 150 companies all lined up right next to each other. So we should be able to find a lot of cool stuff. Let's get to it. So it's an absolute madhouse in here. I don't think I've seen this event this large. Maybe it'll kind of get a little less crazy as the show goes on here. But uh, the first thing we came across here is the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra House Battery Generator. And this is their uh, sub panel that goes with this. And this is a smart panel. It's designed to work as a sub panel off your main electrical. And what it lets you do is plug in a huge battery like you've got down here. But you can also plug in uh, generators and solar panels as well. It works with all of those things. So you can really uh, get as much energy into your home as possible in case one of those things goes down. And I wanted to bring in my friend here. I've got uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Reese John uh, from Frugal Repair. And I have watched your stuff quite a bit on YouTube. So first of all, where can people find your channel? Uh, my channel name is called Frugal Repair. And you're not working for this company, but you happen to have one of these installed already. And you have the app up, so I thought we'd take a look at it real quick. Sure. So while you're doing that, tell me about your channel. Well, let's see. I like to uh, fix things. Hence the frugal repair. Yeah, so that's kind of how I got started. But I, I've uh, gotten into solar, batteries, and technology, and anything kind of interesting to help people learn. Uh, so that's, that's what I like to do. And Jake is going to pull around here so we can get an image of, of your unit here. So what do we see here? Uh, so this is the smart home panel working. So you can see there's power coming in from the grid, feeding some critical loads. And you can see the different circuits that I have going on. I can turn them on and off and see the energy usage that they have. It sounds pretty cool and be able to do all that. So you're going to have some more on this on your channel so people can check it out. Yes, the video is coming out on Tuesday. Great. Well, good luck in this madhouse. Hi, thank you. Now, the sub panel costs $1,800. The battery is about $5,700. They do offer some bundles that you can do to try to bring the cost down a bit. But kind of a neat package there where you can have your sub panel be smart. Now, I am a sucker for cool mechanical keyboards, and this is the Rhizome Lite from a company called Kibodo, and it is a very compact mechanical keyboard. It's got nice sized keys here with a very nice feel. They've got the brown switches on them, and what they're pitching here is a product that is completely repairable by the user. So you can take it apart if you want. You can replace the battery. It's got a wood base. This is like a very hard bamboo got your electronics here. Again, you can take the battery out and replace it if you need to. They've got aluminum here and then, of course, the keycaps. And altogether, a really neat little thing. Now, this is going to be sold on Kickstarter to begin with, but they do have other products that they've been successful in bringing to market, and it's going to cost about 150 bucks. Now, as you all know, I love these game controllers that you can connect to your phone. This is a new one called, oops, called the Seraphin S3, and this is coming out very shortly. There's no set price yet. They said it's going to be under $200. Now, this looks like some of the other controllers that we've looked at, but what it can do is accommodate cases without additional adapters. I'm not sure how big the case can be, but they say it's got some flexibility. Also of note, this has Hall Effect sticks, which are different than the ALP sticks that we typically see in controllers. So it uses magnets to sense the position of where you're looking in a game, for example, or where you're moving. And these are not subject to drift. You get a lot more sensitivity. They're actually really cool. And this will work with iPhones and with Android devices. And if my friend here can flip it around to the back, we've got replaceable grips on the back that we can use to change the comfort level. So if you could flip it over real quick, we can show the, uh, the grip part there. And so you can adjust how the back grip feels with different snap-ons there. And it's kind of neat. So we'll have to see if we can get one of these in and see how it compares to some of the other ones. Like many of the other controllers we've looked at, you've got a headphone jack here at the bottom, and you can also charge your phone through the USB-C port on it. Now, here's an interesting product that is coming out soon, about six months here in the US. This is called the Phone Cam by a company called Slim Design. And as its name suggests, it is a little wearable camera 
kind of like a smaller version of a police body camera. And it connects to the shirt with a magnet, so it's, it hangs on pretty tight there. And what it does is it actually transmits to the phone in your pocket. So your phone does all of the recording and some of the AI stuff that may need to get done. It can record continuously. You can use it as an alarm. So if you have family members, you can keep track of where they are. You can actually live stream video from it so you can see what they're seeing as they're walking around. And it's kind of a neat idea. And what's nice is that you get that red light on there to tell you what's going on. This iPad is showing a, an example of kind of the mapping functionality and how you could go uh, look up people to see where they're at. And it's pretty affordable. Again, it's going to come out pretty soon. It does not yet have stabilization built in, but they're working on some AI techniques for that. And it records at 1080p. And that is the phone cam. So here's another interesting keyboard we just stumbled across. This is the Naya Create. It's designed for professionals that are looking to up their game a bit in their efficiencies and their workflows. And as you can see here, you can fold it into this ergonomic design here, or you can have it sit flat. And what's cool about this design is that they have integrated controls for professionals, like a shuttle jog here for video editors, or a 3D control device, similar to that old space ball thing from the 90s that you can use to navigate your 3D environments, and they even have a trackpad device that can snap in also. And it's really geared towards you know, people that are in the professional creative world that are trying to get faster and more efficient, and they can customize this to get those workflows sped up a bit. It costs about $4.99. The modules will vary based on what they are. And again, really designed for the professional environment. So this, I thought, was a projector. But in fact, it is a telescope. And if Jake pulls in here a little closer, you can see how this is configured. So on the top, they have an iPhone. And what you do is you align the iPhone's lens with this little socket here. And the telescope's lens is then used to basically give you a little bit more, or a lot more, magnification. They have filters available so you can point it at the sun and do sun observations during the day. You do, of course, want to make sure that filter is on before you put your phone down on it. Uh, but it can also do other things like the moon and other things in the night sky. The app also has some things that direct you to finding what you are looking for. And I'm not sure I can find that here quickly, but uh, you get the idea. You basically turn it on to the mode that you want to do. I could do deep sky here. I can point it at Alberon here, and it will tell me where I need to point the camera to in order to find it in the sky. So pretty simple device here for people first getting into astronomy, and I thought you all might find it interesting. Uh, it's going to cost $3.99. You do, of course, have to bring your own phone. It works with iPhones and Android phones, and they tell me the standard lens is the one you want to use on your phone for this product. Now, this is an interesting face mask. Now, we've typically thought about face masks for all this COVID stuff that we went through, but this mask is designed for you to talk in places and not have people hear what you're saying. So if my friend can flip it over here real quick, it's all passive. So it's got a microphone inside that'll be powered by your phone, and they have some different ways you can connect it to your phone. And inside, they have material similar to what you would have to lessen the noise of a jet engine. And what it allows you to do if you're on a train or around a bunch of people, you can actually have a conversation without disturbing those around you. Some sound does kind of come out of it if you come really close to it, but generally it'll muffle a lot of what you are saying. And this is going to sell for $3.99. It's not yet out. They've got a Kickstarter running. And maybe when they get closer to retail, we'll take a look at one. So this is something interesting that we ran across. And this is more of an enterprise product at the moment, but this is called PhotonFi. And as its name suggests, it is a networking product that uses infrared versus RF. And if you are in a very uh, congested RF environment like we are right now here at CES, this might be one way to punch through that because you're using light. They say it's also a little more secure because somebody can't just park outside your office and pick up your Wi-Fi access point. It is more directed. It's line of sight. What you're looking at here is their access point module. And on the top of it here, you can see it's got a bunch of uh, what looks like RJ45 jacks. And what you do is you wire up from each of these jacks one of what they call the antenna units. And these are the transceivers. And this is how they communicate with different devices. At the moment, you're going to get about 250 megabits per second per device. It is capable of going faster, but they're trying to find some markets here for this to see what different corporations and prosumers are looking for in a product like this. 
But if you have a very busy RF environment, this might be one way to solve that issue and provide dedicated bandwidth. They're also telling me that you're not going to have many collisions between devices, so they can support 16 devices connecting at the same time to an access point, and each basically has its own channel, so you don't have to worry about losing your 250 megabits. And again, over time, they think they can go faster. So pretty cool concept here. They're rolling it out here at the show and looking for enterprise customers. So I know a lot of you work in the enterprise and you might find some use case for this. Now, as we were walking away, they did mention one other thing. The technology in this product is actually used in satellites to communicate in orbit. So this company has a lot of experience in this area and they're looking to see if they can take that satellite design and bring it down into a package that works in the workplace. Pretty cool stuff. So we stopped by the lap lock table and they have a clamp that you can use to secure your laptop to a desk no matter where you are. So as you can see here, we've got this table here and I don't want to shake it too hard because everything's going to fall off again here. Um, but the uh, clamp here is not going anywhere. This laptop is not leaving. And if you're at coffee shops a lot and you got to get up and go to the bathroom or something, you can actually get your laptop secured in a way where you'll have pretty good confidence that it's going to be there when you get back. Now to unlock it, there's two different methods based on which one of these locks you choose. Uh, this one here has integrated the Benji lock, and we saw Benji locks at a prior CES show that we were at a couple of years ago. These are these little padlocks that you can unlock with a fingerprint, and they work pretty well, actually. And so they've now got this technology integrated into this, so you can unlock it very quickly. And when you unlock it, it just unclips. You can fold it up and put it in your bag and keep going. Now, this version requires you to adhere a clamp to the bottom of your laptop. But if you don't want to do that, you can get another version here that works with laptops that have one of those Kensington lock slots. So you can secure it that way. So you do have some options if you don't want to glue something to the bottom of your laptop. Now these are battery powered. They say the batteries are those uh, small watch type batteries that'll last a couple of years. If the battery starts to die, you will get a warning, and it won't let you lock if the battery is low. But they say you shouldn't have to replace the batteries all too often. Now, last year we saw this speaker here called the Mirai, and it looked kind of like a computer speaker. It didn't quite look like something you'd put in the living room. But what was neat about it was that even in this noisy environment, when you stand in front of it, you can hear dialogue very clearly. And it was designed for people that were having trouble hearing television dialogue. They've now come up with a new product here. This is a soundbar version of it. It costs $2.99, and it gives you, of course, more robust sound, stereo sound, and it'll plug into your television to enhance audio. It connects over optical cable or a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. All right, we stopped by the Belkin table, and they've always got some neat charging devices and other things. So this is like a little uh, key charger. This is a charger that will go a little faster. So for your phones that support the faster Qi charging, you can put them on this side. That's why there's a bump here. Then the other side is a regular Qi charger for your AirPods and stuff. This one's kind of neat. This is a, a little portable foldable charger. So you can pack this in your bag. And you've got a little stand so you can put your iPhone in there and get that new fancy clock interface that it does when it's turned sideways. Mine, of course, isn't doing that at the moment, but you get the idea. And Right, <laughs> and we don't have it plugged in, that's why. Um, but you can you know, plug it into your USB-C adapter and off you go. Now this is a neat little dock. This is their six-in-one GAN dock. Now we've looked at docking stations before, but this one, as you can see, has 130 watts of power. It's got a built-in power supply. So you don't need a power dongle with you. You just plug it right into the wall, and you got your gigabit ethernet and HDMI output, and you've got two USB-As and a USB-C here on the front. This is USB 3.2, it's not USB 4 or Thunderbolt, but it's just like one less thing to pack in the bag if you want a docking station and a power supply while you're on the go. Pretty cool stuff. Now the dock here will cost $139 when it comes out in March. The dock here costs $79, and this dock here has two varieties, one with a power supply for $59, and there's another version without that costs a little bit less. Now you might be wondering, what's the big deal about a washing machine? Well, I do a lot of laundry because I got two kids and my wife does too. And this is actually a washer and a dryer in one unit. It uses a heat pump for the drying. The con condensation from the drying cycle gets tossed out through the drain. So it doesn't require a vent. And you can plug it into 110 
and just hook it up the way your washer is currently hooked up. So it's basically two units in one. It has 4.8 cubic feet of capacity. So it's got a good amount of capacity. And basically, you can put all your laundry in there and turn it on. And when it's done in about two hours or so, it will have washed and dried your clothes. And of course, you've got all your usual controls up here for all the typical stuff that you do. You also have a smart detergent dispenser. So you fill this up, and it will automatically dispense the detergents. You don't have to keep pouring the bottle in. You fill up the thing here, and it will properly supply the detergent into the system here. You also, of course, have your fabric softener, which gets dispensed in the same fashion here. So it's going to save a lot of space, and it saves a lot of power also, because, again, you're running this off of 110. You're not bringing in all of the air that you've air conditioned in your home to toss it out the vent. And if you're looking for a way to speed up the laundry process, you don't have to wait up at night for the washer to finish. You just wake up in the morning and everything's done. Now, the washer-dryer combo here currently is on sale for $24.99. My wife will see this and make me go out and get one, so I'll review it if I do. And it normally will sell for $28.99, but this is found at most major retailers like Home Depot, so it does go on sale from time to time. So we stopped by the Withings table, and they've got a neat new medical device. Now, this is not yet cleared by the FDA, but they're hoping to get that cleared soon. And what this is is a device that can do four different analyses. So you have a, a way to do your heart rate here. It's got two leads, and it's got a fake heart. That heart doesn't come with it. <laughs> they're just doing a little demo here. But you can get your uh, cardiogram here by just push, pushing two fingers down on it. It also has a pulse oximeter. So they've got an infrared sensor here at the top that'll read your pulse ox. Now what's neat about this thing is we've seen these kinds of products all the time. On this side here, it has a stethoscope. And so if you are having cardiac issues, you can actually live stream your, the sound of your heart through the stethoscope to your doctor. So you can get analyzed while you're out in the field. They can actually listen in with the built-in stethoscope. On the other side is a contactless thermometer, and you just swipe it across your forehead to take your temperature. Now, this also syncs up with the Withings app, and the Withings app, in turn, will sync up with the health apps on Apple and Android devices. So, pretty cool analysis tool. It's gonna be about $250. They're hoping to get FDA clearance soon, and it might be something that could be covered under insurance. So this is another home appliance, the Revolution Cooking Microwave. Now, this is not yet available. They're introducing this at the show. This is a microwave and an oven in one. So as Jake goes in there, you can see the heating elements down there. This is their proprietary infrared heating element that they say heats up very quickly. And what's neat about this microwave is that it will use the heating element and microwave simultaneously. And they have a whole menu of options here. So if I select microwave, for example, I could do an air fry that will combine, for example, microwave and uh, the heating elements. And if I jump back here, I can go into other features. They have an easy menu here where I can select what I want to make. So I want to make brownies here. I just tell it what I've got, and it'll make it, and it will properly adjust the level of microwaving and heating element cooking that goes into it. So pretty neat device here plenty of room inside of it. It'll do air frying as well as you saw. And this is going to be a little on the pricier side. I think they're kind of targeting the higher end market, about $1,800. They're going to try a Kickstarter first to see what kind of interest there is and go from there. Now, if Jake pans the camera to the left a little bit, their primary product is this one. So they have been able to d deliver stuff. And this is a toaster that costs about three or 400 bucks, um, but kind of works in a similar fashion where you've got the menu there and you have their heating elements that can heat up your toast and bagels and everything else. And they say this toaster works much better than a conventional one because it can heat up a lot quicker. So that will do it for this first dispatch from CES 2024. And we have a ton of stuff coming this week. There's many more events like this one that we just went to. We're going to go on the show floor for a little bit. And I also want to let you know we have a sponsor this year, SK out of South Korea. They're one of the biggest Korean companies. And they are going to have us over at their booth tomorrow. And we're going to have a video kind of looking at all the things this company does. They're trying to raise awareness throughout the uh, United States of what they do. And certainly it'll be of interest to those of you who work in technology areas. And then we're also going to have a live stream with them the following day. So 
Uh, on the 9th, you will see that live stream pop up and we'll be talking to people from the SK group as well. So stay tuned for that. It'd be great if you could watch those to uh, help out our sponsor here and help uh, keep this kind of coverage going. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.